Welcome to this short tutorial showing you how you can make TweetDeck work for you with a particular focus on tweet chats. So here we are on the front page of TweetDeck. Uh, TweetDeck's address is www.tweetdeck.twitter.com or you can get here by just googling TweetDeck. It will come up as one of the very first hits in Google. TweetDeck is owned by Twitter and so they are designed to work really well with each other and to speak with each other really smoothly. When you first come to TweetDeck, it's good to already be logged into Twitter. It just makes the whole process that tiny bit more smooth. So I'm already logged into Twitter. And so when I click on log in, it will take me automatically to the TweetDeck interface and you can see that I'm logged in here and all of my information is feeding across into TweetDeck. You can see that the TweetDeck interface is a little bit different to Twitter, but it has all of the same features just in a different layout. So we've got columns of tweets that are happening and we have a space for us to compose our tweets and add images and do all sorts of things with our tweets. And then we have our control column here, which is allowing us to keep control of the entire application. So I'm just going to close these off, remove them, so that I can show you how easy it is to set these up. Okay, so when you first come in, if you haven't set anything up before, your screen may look like this. It may also just look like this. And that's okay if it looks like this and you can't see the space where you enter your tweets or you compose your tweets, just click this blue tweet button here and that column will appear for you. And this is where you type your tweets in. And when we type our tweet, this is all about the tweet deck interface, hashtag Twitter newbie, let's just say. And you can see there's some drop downs came up of popular um, hashtags. This is also if I'm in a tweet chat where I would add in my hashtag. So I might be in the LCN 600 connected learning tweet chat. And so I would add in my Twitter chat, uh, hashtag there. If I want to add an image, I can click here and it will start searching my images files and I can just click on the image and click open and it will add that automatically for me. I can schedule the tweet so if I want the tweet to appear at 8 p.m. and I'm sitting in front of my computer at 9 a.m. in the morning I can just click on this and schedule my tweet to happen at that particular time uh, but I don't really want to do that now so if I if I have scheduled the tweet I can just click on this and it will uh, take that option away from me. Uh, and I can send direct messages. So direct messages to someone that I uh, have got a Twitter connection with. So if I wanted to say I wanted to um, send a message to Mandy Lupton, I would just type this and then I would type in my message and no one will see this except her. It's a direct message to Mandy. So that's the direct messages option there. So, but I don't want that right now. So here is where I add my columns. Now adding a column is really easy. You just click add column and it will give you options and it will pre-populate for you some of the most standard types of columns. So if I want a column that basically shows me exactly what I would see if I was on the regular Twitter interface, I click home. And you can see here, it gives you a preview of what it looks like. I go, yes. That looks like my home column and I'm quite happy with that. So I can just click add column and then just X out and there it is. There's my home column. Now I can fiddle around with that a little bit by clicking these blue buttons up here. I can use it to ask it to specify particular types of tweets that I want to see. Um, I can also ask it to show the media in different ways. So if people tweet with images or videos, I can ask it to show me them in looking in particular ways. This is useful if you're doing your tweet decking on a mobile device, because obviously if you're working on 
uh, mobile data, you don't necessarily want to download videos and images because that will use up a lot more data. So you might choose hidden uh, for, for that scenario. Whereas if you're at home and plugged into your home Wi-Fi, you can go all out and, tw and get really large images if you would like. You also uh, can not have a, a notification sound or a desktop notification. Uh, and so you can have those set up if you would like. So you have all the, that control just behind that little blue button there. Now, what this is really powerful, TweetDeck is really useful for is for when you're having a tweet chat. So what I can do here is I can add a column and I can choose this option search. And here I can do a search for a particular tweet chat hashtag. So I know that there was an OLL, ONL181 tweet chat quite recently. So if I search for that hashtag, all of the tweets that came through from that conversation are all grouped together in this column. And it makes it a lot easier to follow the conversation because each tweet follows one after the other rather than my home column, which would still show these tweets, but interspersed with everyone else's tweets who aren't necessarily involved in the conversation. And I can take this one away if I like, if I want to, and just have the conversation column there uh, so that I can focus purely on the tweets that are involved in this conversation. Now, if I'm part of the tweet chat, people may send me particular they may comment particularly to me. And during a tweet chat, the tweets do sometimes come through fairly quickly and it can be easy to miss those ones. So I would suggest that during a tweet chat, you add a second column and this one would be a notifications column. Now this notifications column is all of the tweets where someone has particularly referred to you. So you can see here that these are all of the tweets where someone has sent them specifically to me. They've mentioned me in the tweet. And so during the conversation that's happening in the tweet chat, you can specifically see if someone has tweeted directly to you, not a direct message. This, these tweets everyone can see, but they're particularly addressed to you. And so it helps for you to stay on top of what's happening there. What you can also do is you can add a column where you only have likes showing. So these are all of the ones that you have liked and you can use that because you can use that after the tweet chat. You can then just look at the ones at the tweets that you particularly wanted to reflect on or, or you particularly thought were uh, worthwhile or you wanted to go back to later on. And you can see that each one of these has the red heart lit up because I have pressed the like tweet on, on these uh, ones here. So you can see that it's actually quite easy to navigate. Now, what I can do is if I want to, I can move these around. I just put my cursor over these vertical lines and drag it to where I want it to go. Now, the main settings that you're going to be interested in, if I go to settings down here, I get lots of different options that you're very welcome of course to explore but if I go to the settings the main things that I want to set up is I can turn off autoplay GIFs now this is useful if you are on mobile data because a GIF is a small video file that repeats over and over and obviously you don't want to use up your data on those so you can turn that off if you're out on mobile data but I'm at home plugged in so I'll turn that back on you can also change the columns. So I've got the columns wide at the moment, but if I change them to narrow, you can see that I'll be able to fit a lot more columns in here. Now this might be useful to me if I want to also have my home tweet chat, uh, tweet column, and if perhaps I am also wanting to watch what a particular user has got to say. So I might be really interested in following what uh, Mandy Lupton is saying, just for an example. I search for her and I click, yes, this is the person I want to watch. And now I'm going to see every single tweet that Mandy uh, sends out. 
and I'm not going to miss anything that she likes or that she sends out. So this is a useful one to have set up if you have it set up on your desktop all of the time. If your boss tweets a lot, it can be handy to have your boss's Twitter handle. You're always across what they're tweeting out. Or if you're belonging to a Twitter group and you want to see what that particular group handle. So, for example, if you're in a library and you're part of a Twitter group and your library tweets, you might want all of your library tweets grouped there because they've got a particular handle. So you can see that I can fit one, two, three, four, five across when my columns are narrow. But if I'm concentrating on a chat, I would probably prefer to have them wide. And now I'm down to four. And I probably would like to take away my home channel during the chat because it can be a little bit distracting because it's constantly flickering. So for a tweet chat, I actually like to just have the search for the hashtag of the Twitter chat and the notifications because then I can really focus in on what's happening during the chat and I'm not distracted by all of those other things jumping up and down beside me. The other setting that you probably are keen on is uh, the font size. So I have the font size set on largest, but I'm going to set it on smallest just so that you can see the difference. Now, if I had a really incredible eyesight, or if I was uh, on a much smaller screen, I might prefer this smaller font size. So you do have that control there, which is quite nice in the settings menu, but I'm gonna go back to the largest because I like to relax my eyes as much as possible. So that gives you a really brief overview. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is this stay open. Now this keeps the new tweet column open permanently, which is a really handy thing to have during a tweet chat because you don't have to click around looking for it. If I get rid of it and just hide this, it's quite easy to reveal it. It just is that blue, blue button up there. But just that extra tweet can take up valuable time during a Twitter chat. And so I like to have it open all of the time. And so I can click stay open. But if I'm just in Twitter viewing things, I might want to close that up so that I can see more columns. So it gives you an overview of the TweetDeck layout as it exists in December 2018. I'm sure that you'll find that as months pass, different aspects of it will change as different iterations get rolled out. However, you will be able to stay on top of those changes because the general layout, once you're familiar with it, will stay basically the same. So thank you very much for joining me in this short video.